Well, howdy. This is your neighborhood high school language arts teacher, poet Tim Staley, here for another installment of How to Teach Literature. Now, by now, you, you've been watching all the videos of me telling you how to teach, and you're starting to understand some of my process. Today, I want to just share some nuts and bolts of putting some of my processes or processes or processes to work. So y'all had a great, a great uh, series of classes today, and I wanted to share what happened. So I started this school year with my seniors here in southern New Mexico. We're about 45 minutes from Juarez and I, Juarez, Mexico. I started this school year with a discussion of Mexico's history, starting with the Aztecs and the Mayans. And we worked all the way up through through the Mexican-American War. And we read some Mexican poetry from some Mexican greats. I offered the poetry in Spanish and English right there together. As you'll remember, New Mexico is a bilingual state by law. And what else have we done? We read the epic poem by Jimmy Santiago Baca. I think I talked about that in our last video. Well, we're sort of coming to getting close to ending my unit on on uh, Chicano literature and the history of Mexican American literature and Mexican uh, poetry. And what I started talking about last week with my students is the Chicano movement. So this was a movement that ran in some ways parallel to the civil rights movement, but they are not the same movement. So I talked about some of the big players. I showed some videos. We learned about people like Dolores Huerta, Cesar Chavez, Reyes Tijarina. And then most importantly, the one I really focus on is Rodolfo Corky Gonzalez. Here's his book, Message to Aslan. Now, Corky was a boxer, politician, grew up in Denver, died in Denver in 2005. And Corky wrote an epic poem that was instrumental in getting people fired up during the Chicano movement. It was called Yo Soy Joaquin, I Am Joaquin. So this poem, I mean, hey, y'all, this is 14 pages long. This poem is bilingual in Spanish and English. It's, it's very long. Not as long as that epic poem, I Walk Through the Door, I Am, but still pretty long. I didn't want to read the whole thing to my students. How am I going to get this poem to my students? How am I going to get this poem to my students with the hope and the goal that they may be engaged with this poetry? So what I did is I pulled the poem off the internet. Now, that's my first mistake in a way because the poem on the internet did have a dozen or so typos in it that I got from, it seemed like a fairly reputable website, but y'all know the internet's full of a bunch of trash. So that was probably one of the mistakes. I guess if I really wanted to do this right, I would have typed in the poem myself and proofread a hundred times, uh, cause I'm dyslexic. So that, that, that is a task, but something I could have done, or I would have done photocopies, but I, you know how that is with the environment and stuff. So what I did is I got this poem off the internet. I have since tried to fix every class I've fixed the typos, but that's not what I'm here to talk to you about. So I got the poem, I put it on Canvas, on the online uh, portal we have for students. I broke this 14 page poem into eight sections. And then I, I shared the poem with the students on the internet. And I, I broke the class into eight groups. I said, you're group one, you're reading the group, you're, you five students, you four students are reading part one. You four students, part two, part three, part four. I explained that you, you might you might think that this is an unusual way to, to read a poem, to, to just read a little, a little section of it. Here's something about poetry. The great poetry, and, and by somebody as talented as uh, Rodolfo Corque Gonzalez, the great poetry, you can pull any line out of the poem and it's going to sparkle all on its own. Consider a diamond necklace with, with 30 diamonds. Now, they look really pretty all together, my goodness. But you can take any of those diamonds out and put it on a shelf, and it's going to sparkle all by itself. That's what good poetry does. So I knew going into this, by breaking this 14-page poem into eight different sections, I knew that the poem, the, the students will be able to get something out of it no matter what section they, they saw. What, what was my assignment? All right, what I asked them to do is I want every student to take six minutes, seven minutes, and I set a timer. I want every student to read your passage. 
And then I want you to either A, ask a question, something you don't understand. B, maybe there's some word that you don't know. I want you, uh, like matizo um, I, uh, or zapatista. I want you to look up this word and then define it for the class. Number three, maybe you just like a couple lines. I want you to be prepared to read those lines out loud and then I want you to be prepared to answer if I ask you why you like those lines. Maybe, maybe, heck, maybe you, you, you want to talk about the theme, some of the themes in your, in your uh, section or anything in between. Just have something to say about your section of poetry that you read out of this. Uh, Yo soy Joaquin, I am Joaquin, the famous epic poem that was so instrumental during the Chicano movement. And y'all, it was such a, a huge success today in every one of my classes a poem from the late 60s, and, and every single student had something to say. I had the poem up on the digital screen, and so as the students were saying, well, I really like this passage, and they would read a few lines, I'd have that on the screen so that students could also be reading and seeing visually the lines. I refrained over and over again from, from giving my opinion as the precious English teacher about what something meant, and I kept on saying, look, y'all, if there's any fun to be had in poetry, it's not, it's not hearing what the English teacher says stuff's supposed to mean. Now that I believe in. That, 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 that's my truth. If there's any fun to be had in poetry, it's not some teacher telling you what to think or what something means. Now, however, what, what's the role of the teacher though? Well, it's to come up with this assignment. It's to put that poem in front of them. What were you doing up there, Mr. Staley? All right. Well, so one thing I was doing is pointing out some form and technique stuff, always a great thing to talk about. We've been learning about spatial line breaks, about leaving that precious left margin. So hey, look at the, look at the poet doing here. We were, I, I, I got to talk about parallel structure today. Some student would say, well, I really like these lines. I am this, I am that, I am this, I am that. I said, oh, yeah, I like that too. You know, that's an example of parallel structure. Notice telling a student a literary device um, like telling a student some, some form and technical thing, that's not, that's not getting into what something means. That is teaching though, and that is learning. And if you wanted to push that for tomorrow's lesson, you could have the students write something with parallel structure. You could have the students write something with spatial line breaks, just using that whole page, leaving that left margin. And man, the students, they, they just had great stuff to say all day today. Some students were looking up words. Think about how much more valuable a student on their own finding a word that they don't know on their own, going to their phone and looking up that word or the dictionary, looking up that word and defining that word on their own. In my opinion, that is 100% more successful than handing out a, a vocab list of 20 vocab words. How do I know? Because I did that my first decade teaching. Anything I'm telling you, y'all, has been 20 years in the making. I came right out of teacher school doing the exact same techniques that were all wrong. And I've developed this technique and strategy where students maybe will read poetry when they, when they get out of this school. That's my goal. As we've talked about on this channel, you don't need me to repeat myself. That's my goal. I want students to be open to poetry. This is the way you do it. You want, it, you want a country full of poetry readers? <laughs> this is how. You want you want students to leave leave your your classroom hating poetry. Join the club of English teachers. I made sure that they knew who Corky Gonzalez was. And here's one final note, y'all. When I started the school year with the history of Mexico, like I'm not kidding, a week of just history stuff. Who are the Aztecs? Who's Montezuma? Do 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 do. Mexican American War. Reading the people's history. Uh, of, of America by Howard Zinn to the students, getting getting some gritty details, some personal accounts, Mexican-American War, Treaty of Hidalgo, laying it out, beginning of the school year. Here we are six weeks later, and all of a sudden, epic poetry by Rodolfo Corky Gonzalez. All of a sudden, he's mentioned the Treaty de Guadalupe. He's mentioned, he's mentioned in Montezuma. He's mentioned in the Aztec princes. And, and man, those connections... Even if the students didn't remember that at the beginning of this school year, we started on that stuff, I pointed it out. Notice again, that's not telling them what to think about the poem. It's just being like, oh, look, Montezuma here. Do you remember Jaime, the beginning of this school year when we learned about Montezuma? 
Oh, Zapatista, do you remember Emiliano when we learned about this at the beginning of the year? Oh, the Treaty, Treaty of Guadalupe. It's all in this poem. Yo soy Joaquin, I am Joaquin. So those are, you know, that's the type of, uh, that's the type of teacher planning I do. That's the type of lesson planning I do. I'm laying the historical groundwork so that, that weeks later, when we get to the important poetry of that movement, and one really cool thing about the Chicano movement, full of great art and poetry and song, full of it. When we get to that stuff, uh, then, then they've had some historical reference. Y'all uh, follow this channel. I'm trying to retire early, peeps. Follow your channel. Tell every one of your teacher friends, buy my poetry books. I'm working on my fourth book, man. It's, it's almost done. I didn't get a grant to write it. I didn't, I don't, no, no foundation pays me to write poetry. I just get in the seat, y'all. I just, I just, at uh, lunchtime, I'm sitting there working on poems, man. I'm trying to understand my world one line break at a time, peeps. Until next time.